Good afternoon again, guys, and welcome back to another demonstration of the Northern Virtual Food and Drink Festival. Um, I'm joined now by Darren McLeish, um, who is going to cook some fantastic dishes for us. But just before that, let's have another word from our main charity today, which is Hospitality Action. Ollie Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Molar, Dorman. Ricardo Oliva, Concierge. Ulrich Edwards, Quencher's assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. Ioana Georgiou, junior sous chef. Nuno Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Himeri Bochkai, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, sushi head chef. Mitchell Collier, duty manager. Anna Grabczewska, public area cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? So I'd like to give a big festival welcome to Paul McNeish. Welcome to the stage, Paul. Hello, mate. Not Darren McLeish. I don't know who that... I'm sure you just said Darren McLeish before. Did I say Darren? I do apologise, Paul. I do apologise. Right, I've got the, the wrong script in front of me, days, obviously. Mate. It's been a long day. I've got the wrong script. It's all right, mate. How are you doing? You well? Yeah, very well, thank you. Thank you very much for doing this for us. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so tell us a little bit more about... Paul Niche, who's he? Okay, well, I'm the executive chef of Dolphy Hall and the, uh, the whole Dolphy estate for his uh, lordship, so the Earl and Countess of Derby. Uh, the Safari Park's part of the entire estate too. I don't have much to do with it because they're, they're all over it over there. And we're very much looking forward to them getting back open. Uh, so originally from England, went to Australia for a long time, so you might get a bit of a twang. Uh, a little bit there, you might get some viewers from Australia today too, which is great for that. Uh, and yet I've been here for five years. We love it here. We live on the estate, which is why I'm in the kitchen now. So I'm in the underbelly of Nolsey Estate or Nolsey Hall right now. And it's a stunning day out there. And I don't want to tell you about it because I know you've been looking for a small window of your room all day. Um, and that's probably what we are missing today, actually, a little bit. So, I mean, obviously, the food festival has been amazing. And before I get too much more to me, thank you, Craig. Thank you, Sean. And thank you, Jackie, for literally everything you've done, which is huge. Uh, it's brought us all together. Uh, we are a great industry anyway, but it definitely needs people like you guys to do it. Um, and that's what I've been trying to do since I got here at Nolsey, try and put Nolsey on the map a little bit more, try and do some good food. Uh, we have a lot of weddings here. It's not a wedding venue by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, we, we have a broad range, uh, but no matter what food we're doing, we want to do it the best. And today I've actually showcased a bit of Nolsey produce because we actually produce quite a bit on the estate. Very lucky, very lucky indeed. So I'm going to hand the stage over to you and then disappear behind the scenes. Let's uh, show us your magic. All right, thank you. Everyone, g'day. How are you? The old red mug. If you watch my YouTube channel, you know I like my red mug. All right, so today, I'm going to do a venison tartare. Uh, it's going to be made out of venison heart. Um, and that might just freak you out straight away and you just go, well, we don't want to eat heart. Well, you don't get the opportunity very often. It's number one. And number two, it's delicious. Uh, so, and number three, this is a virtual chef demo, so you're not going to get to try anything really. So, you might as well just stick with me. And the entire, um, what I've done today is tried to be a little bit chefy. Like, I mean, I'm not trying to say, look, you can all do this at home. I'd love you to try and do it at home. And if you've got a few bits of tools and stuff, like we've got a bit of sous vide going on today, and we've got some stuff going in an ISI gun. I mean, you're watching a food demo. You're probably pretty foodie. You should probably buy a sous vide. That's what I'm saying. So, anyway, so we've got a steak tartare which I'm going to make out of heart. I'm going to use a little bit of fillet from the venison as well, because just too much heart can be a little bit, a little bit offily. Uh, so we'll just move it in a little bit more. And then with that, it's going to have the same ingredients as a normal sort of steak tartare. So if you don't find yourself being able to get hold of a venison heart, which you probably won't, because I'm extremely lucky to have a gamekeeper. I want to say oh, I've got a gamekeeper. My boss has a gamekeeper, and the gamekeeper gives the meat to me. So let's not think for a second I have a gamekeeper, because I don't. So he shot a deer, a roebuck on Friday. So I just butchered it, and there's a there's a video on my YouTube of how I butchered that. 
which is very easy. So zero food miles, we're getting on the plate here. So that will be normal steak tartare if you like. Uh, I've got a few extra sexy sort of things we're gonna do with it. We're gonna do some truffle jokes. Uh, I thought a truffle jokes, you will need a sous vide machine and a backpack machine. So you might not have both of them. You could just leave it off, but you could just confit some yolks in uh, some olive oil or something, and then use it that way. Google that one, you'll find out. I won't tell you all of that. Keep it as a surprise. Uh, and then finally on top, we're gonna go for miso espuma. And espuma is just Spanish for pretentious foam, I believe. So, uh, so we just stick with that, it's just a foam. So it's in a cream gun, and these things, we used to use them just for cream, and they're just, they're amazing. They've got so many uses, quite a fan of them. Uh, and they're not that expensive, so they're a nice little investment. Anyway, let's crack on. I'm just gonna move the camera down. Hopefully this actually works. There we go. There's a bit of hand cam, beautiful. All right, so, start off, we're just gonna smash straight into it and get into truffle jokes, because they're gonna take a little bit of time to cook. So, this recipe is reasonably large, uh, and you won't use all the yolks for this. It's 28 yolks. So you can half it. I just find this amount really does sous vide the best, um, and I use it all week, so I'll use this on breakfast, uh, use it on other stuff. Fair enough, because this has got truffle oil in it, and there's a lot of people out there that don't really like truffle oil, or like the flavour truffle oil brings. Once again, this isn't for you, so I've, got, I've just separated two eggs, just so it looks like I'm actually doing something. I've already got 18 in the bowl, so let's all face it, me cracking 20 eggs is uh, not riveting TV. Um, and you've had some good, really good TV. I've been watching lots of the chefs do the demos over the last few days. We've been big ups to all of you, giving up your time. And it's, it's hard going, this set. I mean, I'm making lots of videos. And it's hard going getting all set up, because you've got to clean down. And what we don't have when we're furloughed, which is all of us, is a KP. And I miss the KPs more than most things. So, I mean, and Craig will tell me, as a lot of dishes get done, and Sean, you'll know, every time we do these little videos for you, we'll clean the dishes for an hour. And putting on weight, eating everything. So like, that's what you've got to thank us for. So anyway, what I've done is just whisk up those egg, egg yolks. I'm going to backpack these in the bag. And I've got the sous vide set up. This is the sous vide. Made by sous vide tools, local company, and they're doing really good stuff. Uh, and they're actually working really closely with the government, trying to get sous vide a little bit more sorted on the uh, EHO sort of radar, because they can be a little bit crazy with what their beliefs of uh, sous vide and all of us are. So, there we go, got this. I'm just gonna sous vide this in a bag, in, in the backpack machine. I'm just going off camera for two seconds while I chuck this in the machine. I promise you there'll be any terrible bit of footage you have for the day. All right. So, in fact, I won't, because I'm gonna need more. So I'm gonna spin the camera around. I'm over at the backpack machine, because I need to just check the eggs. Because when you're backpacking eggs, they like to grow. And all you chefs out there, who you see, you've probably done this, you've exploded eggs in your backpack machine, you video or no video, I don't, I don't want to be part of it. To clean it. So, just wait for this to close. Once again, you can leave this step out. These truffle jokes, and, and Lucy, my, my, my friend, she's a bit better than that. So, they certainly have their place. So, let's get back. So, why we backpack things and when we're sous vide and stuff, let me just get that back in action. Well, that actually worked out quite well. I'm not going to put a lot. Uh, why we do this is it's uh, sous vide means, or direct translation of sous vide is under pressure. So you need no air in the bag so it doesn't float around, it doesn't do anything. So we've got the sous vide machine set up uh, 71 degrees, 20 minutes is your first thing. So they're going in. Um, I'm going to have to. I usually use my phone for a timer, and that's what I'm filming on. So that's all I remember. Everyone shout out in 20 minutes and tell me before we get my eggs. So that's step one. Now we're going to move on to these spoons. So that's kind of done. Or when they're going to come out, all we've sort of got to do with those is just mix a bit of truffle oil in a bit of seasoning and we're, we're good to go. Now, the next thing I need to do on top of a bain ring, and I know you're thinking, I'm sure your chopping board's not going to give up much heat. It's not, but the hot water in there is probably enough because I don't need a lot going on with this. So, it's the miso spoon. I'm just going to get that bowl on there. So when I get my egg yolks in there, I'm going to whip them up a little bit um, to make them a bit frothy. Not a on, because I've got nothing in there with it, but enough to make it a bit, a bit frothy, for want of a better word. All right. Okay, so let's get this down here. Okay, so the miso. Um, miso is spoon. Um, I just love miso. And if you haven't used much miso, it comes in really, really funky looking bags like that. That's a, that's a white miso. I'm actually using a red miso today. Um, lots of, 
bolder flavour, as you'd imagine, just from the colour difference. Uh, but I'm only particularly using it because it's already open, so I'm not that particular. Uh, I love Asian ingredients, and there'll be a few other little um, snippets of Asia in here today. And I was watching uh, David Christie's last night, just loving, loving his video. It's a great video, David, brilliant. And I'm a same with him, just, just try out some different Asian ingredients. Like, I mean, I've lived and worked in Australia for a long time, so we just got a, a plethora of Asian ingredients, and we kind of cook stuff quite traditionally. Uh, as opposed to sort of taking it and changing it to our own, which I find English does quite a bit, England does quite a bit with uh, cultural food. It may, you've got your own sort of, you put your own stamp on it, which is cool. But when you strip it back, you miss so many ingredients. So go hunting, means that it's really cool. So for the espuma, I need 80, 80 grams of egg yolks in, a, in this bowl. Roughly, that's about eight. That's about four, four eggs or four egg yolks, sorry. So you can weigh them. A lot of my recipes are weighed because I'll be doing them for large numbers. But essentially, let's go with four egg yolks. It's not confusion all with uh, your grammage. Uh, so they just all go in. And once again, thanks for everyone watching today. Um, obviously, not just mine, but everything I've been watching. And make sure you get on to Hospitality Action, which is just a great, just an amazing charity. There's so much stuff. For really people in the hospitality industry, so if you're thinking just supporting us by watching on today, it's great, and it is. The next step is actually just supporting people a little bit more, which will be brilliant. Okay, so let's get, we get a bit closer, even let's see if we can get higher. Am I, am I playing with fire, moving everything? No, just seems to be legit. No, not really. Let's get a bit more. There we go. Okay, so a little bit of heatness. Just give it a bit of a whip. A little bit more heat now. Just going to get the butter out of the microwave. Okay. This has kind of got a lot of ingredients similar to making a, a hollandaise, but without the, the pain and the fear of having to make a hollandaise. Because, like, as we all know, I love hollandaise. Do I like making hollandaise? Nah, not particularly. Nah. I don't think there's any chef that goes, you know what I love doing before service? Making litres and litres of bloody hollandaise. Anyway, so get this a bit foamy. As I said, not making a savvy on. Uh, there's just a little bit of steam there, that's all. Just aerating them a little bit. It just helps everything to get to know each other. And we're about to just put every ingredient in together. We'll start becoming a little bit better friends. All right, so that's all it is. Just a little bit paler. And all the else is going here, so there we go. We've got that, we need 80 grams of cream, or 80 mils of cream, sorry. So if you haven't got a little measuring jug, I've got a, well, I've got a third of a cup is um, 80 mils. As the crow flies, well, that makes no sense. Well, let's go about. Um, there we go, so we've got, the, we've got the egg yolks and we've got cream. Sitting there going good. Now we want some sesame oil. My well, sesame oil is just amazing and really strong and usually it'd be really delicate with it. I'm not going to be too delicate today. I'm going to go about 20 mils of that. So that's in the spectrum of uh, sesame oil. That's lavish. So lavish pouring of uh, sesame oil. In she goes. Now the miso component. So you want about 60 grams of miso, which works out to be a dollop of miso. That's, I'm pretty sure that's the, uh, the Asian metric of measurement. There we go. So we have your butter, your cream, your miso, your sesame. We're just giving it a good whisk together. And all we've got left to go in is 180 grams of melted butter. So just done enough. And it's not clarified butter. I mean, it has clarified because I've melted it, but I'm going to add everything in there, including uh, the buttermilk, which is the white stuff. Uh, and don't get yourself too concerned. You don't try to emulsify this. I mean, it does a little bit as you whisk it in. I mean, certainly don't get stressed about it actually emulsifying. Gonna move that out of the way. Here we go. So, all get it mixed together. Check for seasoning, which it definitely shouldn't need seasoning because um, it's got miso. And miso, I mean, let's see, get miso in with your life. Uh, if you don't know what else to do with miso, use it for seasoning of things. Like if you're making a soup, finish it off without salt, put some miso in, it gives it a really good depth of flavor. And it tastes amazing. So, I'm gonna put this in the gun now. This gun. Well, you have a kind of dangerous gun. Uh, here we go. And everything you're going to put in one of them, make sure you, you put it through a sieve because it's got a really tiny spout stuff comes through. 
and obviously anything gets caught up, you're gonna have to re-gas your whole machine and, it, and it, it's a real real pain. Real pain. Let's, let's not even tease fakes. There we go, we have a beautiful in the gun. Get back to here, hang on. There we go. Caught in. I'm always amazed when I move the camera and it doesn't fall. So if you ever see me getting excited about camera move, it's because it doesn't always go the way you All right, so seal up, seal up good and tight. Get your spout on for later because you can't really put the gases in too well without it. And there we go. I mean, just one, one charger for this. Uh, and then 20 minutes and that'll be ready too. So we've got yolks being ready in 20 minutes. And I always twist this. Upside down to let the gas get in there. Give it a good shake. I'll put that to one side. What so gas are you using there, Paul? Sorry? What gas are you using? Uh, that's uh, what is it? nitrous, isn't it? I think it's it. Yeah, because you can get two bulbs, you can get nitrous, you can get CO2, they give different size um, bubbles, don't they? Yeah, I think they're nitrous. I'm, I'm not telling you. Uh, I'm almost 100%. I don't think it's CO2 we use. So. Right, will you? So that's that. So the eggs are in, there we go. We can move on to a bit of the um, star of the show, really. Um, and why I'm extremely lucky to have the job I have is um, produce like this. Um, so Noel's the estate. I've got Andy, Andy our gamekeeper, and he's amazing. And he just shot this um, roebuck deer on Friday, as I said. So there's been too many, and they start fighting, and the estate's not big enough. So you do have to cull the herds. So everyone gets crazy out there. And I can't think of a more... Um, Obviously, a more free range, a more uh, zero food miles, more sustainable thing than getting some venison off the estate. So, brilliant. And as I said, I'm using two bits here. I'm using a little fillet from underneath. Um, and they're brilliant. Any premium cut's really good for uh, steak tartare. Um, and I really do like the heart, which is fantastic. But as I said, one, you don't get the hearts very often. Uh, so, it's hard for, me, hard for me to put it on a menu, hard for me to do it for a tasting menu, anything like that. So, it's a real special treat. And usually one that's probably uh, kept for the people shooting, the stalkers and the gamekeepers. I'm lucky if I'm lucky if they leave the offal in. Okay, so let's start trimming it up. Okay, so like any sort of butchery, you're just talking a lot of seam work. So if you start cutting into your heart, you can start seeing what's what's around. You do want all the sinew out. So I just cut that open. I like to just see where I'm going to start with. Flatten out a bit, and you can see where you've got. You've got some. Uh, easy sections which are going to come off in lobes I mean, just take off a bit of those sinews from underneath and, and you see some bits that just look a bit tough rip it off if there's any fat or stuff on the outside take that and you end up with some really nice sections that are just really nice bits of offal um really good uh, i don't have to get too inside but you can just you can sort of follow some lines and see where you're at this is a really nice heart as i said it was a beautiful um it's a beautiful beast uh and we've got such beautiful synergy on the estate we've now got an amazing game larder which was built last year. Well, I say built last year. Uh, it was an old Victorian game larder which we've sort of done up up to a modern day spec so we can now butcher all of our own game and hopefully in the not too distant future uh, be selling all the game to you lovely people out there, uh, especially all you chefs watching this. Um, and the game larder is just, just a fantastic space. Um, but it just means also like last pheasant season, uh, any of our carcasses we have left go straight over to the safari park and the lions eat them. So, I mean, there's not many chefs out there that have lions that can eat their, uh, their leftover food. So we're very lucky. Um, and so are the lions, um, to, be, to be completely fair. All right. And speaking of the lions, so Nolsey Safari Park. That's, we're hoping not too far away, and we're going to have Nolsey Safari Park back open for you guys to take your families around. It's hoping very much so. Still nothing d definitive on a date or anything, but it will be open so you can go for a drive around. So we're hoping that people can jump in their cars and go still see all the lions and tigers and rhinos uh, and then just go home all nice and safe, safe distances. So that, that should be one of our first things to, to reopen. Okay, look. Being from it. the Northwest, Paul, I should love going around all the fire park as a child. Uh, mate, I think every single child in the Northwest has been there. Uh, and that was the thing I got here and I was talking about where I work and most people are like, oh, is that near the safari park? So the safari park definitely has a wider stretching market than uh, an Aussie Hall. 
All right. So here we go. So I've chopped all the meat up. You can see there's lots of meat there. Now what I'm going to do is start dicing up really fine and put it in a bowl. Um, for people at home, if you are making it with fillet steak or, or whatever you're going to be using, maybe you could use sirloin or something like that, and you're not great at doing what I'm doing now, which is going to be chopping things into nice thin sections uh, and dicing it up. Um, if you find your knife's not sharp enough or, you know, it's, it's just not going well, you can freeze your meat slightly uh, and then that will help to sort of slice it as long as it's not completely frozen. Uh, it will give you a little bit more, uh, I don't know, purchase on holding it, you know what I mean? It's that little bit more, you can grab it a little bit easier. What I wouldn't recommend, or in fact, I'm not even going to say I wouldn't recommend, don't do it, is trying to make steak that power and blending it. Um, and there is chefs to do it, and, and they probably do it well because they have the techniques. I don't like it. I, I think it should. It's definitely a. For me, it's hand cut or nothing. But that's that's me personally. Once again, I want to offend every chef who's watching. I like to cut it by hand. Um, you know what you're getting, and I think I think that's part of it. You know, I mean, I've got steak tartare Tourette's. So I mean, I see steak tartare on a menu, I just scream it out like like some sort of weirdo. Like I just I can't go past it. Um, so. Uh, I've had many opportunities to try every different version. Um, as I said the other day on another video I was doing, I lived in France. So having steak tartare Tourette when you're living in France is a dangerous thing to have. It, it's on every menu. So um, I really did eat way too much steak tartare. So as you can see, this bit's going to get to you, but I'm going to have to do it anyway. Uh, it's chopping all this up. Nice and fine. And I don't even want to. This is really, and take your time when you're doing all this at home. Um, if you're doing it at home. Because that's, that's kind of a bit done. Like, as far as the meat components, don't you have to cook it? You don't have to worry about anything else. So you have to rush through this part. Um, just making sure you've got this right. And then obviously all the, um, the bits we're going to chop up next, all the echelot and the gherkin. So same with that. You don't really want to get to a point where it's chopped and then just hacking it with your knife. That there's, there's there's just no need. So just taking your time. Sometimes a good little tip with knives is I think people are just using too big a knife um, to control or handle. I mean, first thing I think you should do when you start wanting to cook is find a knife that's really comfortable for your hand. Um, I find that, and, and often with control wise, especially for people at home but aren't professionals, a smaller knife is 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 not a bad idea. And you get yourself a massive big off that looks like a sword. And you, can, and you can barely wield it around the place, so don't want to do that. So yeah, I've, just, I've just been asked by Sean Noonan, what kind of produce do you have at Knowsley Hall? What's, what's out there for you to use that you can just literally go and either pick or get delivered yeah. to your back door from the estate? We have, we have loads. So like we've got a gardens department, which are brilliant. And because uh, obviously we service uh, is lordship and a ladyship. So we have the, the Earl and Countess of Derby live here. So we, there's a kitchen over there which services their dining. Most of their food will be produced on the estate, which is great. So that's all, everything from onions, potatoes, to beans, uh, raspberry, corn, artichokes, peaches, nectarines, um, you know, whatever, just every single herb you could think of. Um, lot, lots of bits and pieces there. Uh, then we sort of get the overflow at the hall. And I try and find places like we've got the oldest fig tree in England, supposedly, uh, is, is the story. But it produces so many figs each year and, and brilliant things like that. So I get to make my fig jams, which we'll use all year on the cheese boards and things like that. Um, trying to find the avenues to use the fresh produce when it's there, as you well know, Craig, is, is one of the biggest challenges as a chef. Um, so we have the exquisite evening. So like three times a year, we have tasting menus here at the hall where our We'll open up to the public uh, and you can just book a table of one or two, whatever like that, come along and uh, do it. I do like a nine, nine course tasting menu. And that really, it was really the opportunities I get to use the things that are grown on the estate. Uh, and then on top of that, we have, we have a beekeeper on the estate. So he does all my honey for me. I've got some amazing honeycomb at the moment. Uh, we have farmers on the estate. So we do have Hereford beef. Uh, we do have lambs. Um, and once again, I, I, I definitely use them all. I'm not going to for a second tell you that every single bit of beef that gets used in the hall is from that because it's just too hard to buy the whole beast and then um, use it all. Because if you have a wedding, as you know, come in and 100 people want beef cheek, that's, um, that's, 50, that's 50 beef. So I've got to go uh, slaughter for that. So it's, 
it's finding a nice balance. Uh, and, I, and I think we really we really have it here on Knowles. The Avengers, the wild bits and pieces that are growing, like uh, these chives I've, ha- I've found growing today, uh, just from growing around the estate, and they're amazing. Um, and then there's all the games. So, so we've got amazing games. So during game season, we've got pheasant, we've got partridge, we get pigeons off the estate, uh, the odd woodcock and things like that. It's a little treat for us. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the deer. So we've got some uh, roe deer. So very, very fortunate. And his lordship's also got uh, some grouse moors. Uh, so during grouse season, we get the grouse as well. I've, uh, I've got a little bit of product, product envy going on there, uh, Paul. That sounds like an amazing ladder to work from. Mate, it is really good. And once this is all over, Craig, you'll have to come along. Once we're allowed to come along, uh, and I'll give you guys a good tour around because it's, uh, it's, spe- it's a special place. I mean, especially today, the sunshine. We've been really sad. Um, this time of year, it's the most beautiful the estate is. And just no one on the estate is uh, it's a little bit sad, really, isn't it? So, so as you can see there, the heart dices up very differently than the beef. The beef actually sort of bind it a little bit. So I'm going to put that all in a bowl. And this is enough for loads of people. Got, I mean, steak tartare, everyone likes it different. So, I mean, everyone wants to eat it uh, in different amounts. Some people like it as a little starter, which is my wife. She loves it as a little starter. I'd have it as a main of a big bowl of chips. Um, so you can be as delicate or as, uh, or as non-delicate as I am, if you like. I'm just going to swap over this board. Clean my hands. Oh, beautiful. But yeah, I mean to say to say we're missing we're missing customers is a, a huge a huge understatement. Um, and my my wife uh, is is the owner and operator of No Life Skincare, which is actually one of the things in the uh, non-food tent today at the festival. And she makes her own skincare. So we spend most of the summer at the at festivals and at markets selling her wear. So she's missing out on the whole summer's worth of sales. And seeing people, because it's, uh, it's what it's all about, isn't it? Just getting out and actually seeing the people and finding out new, new produce and bits and pieces. Okay. Wonders will never cease. I remember the eggs, which is, which, is, which is impressive for me. You don't all know me, but that's impressive. Okay, so they've been in the uh, water for 20 minutes. And you can see they've started to, just started to sort of cook. So you're basically, you're cooking the egg yolk without all the other egg around it. So if you're a fan of the yolk, heaven, heaven right here. Just get a grab and bowl. I think no matter how many bowls you get ready for a food demo, it's never enough is, is the key, is the key. So gonna open up this bag. And get them yolks out. Absolute gold, literally, and uh, thing. Yeah, so lots of people watching today from Australia and lots of Emma chefs too. And I just want to shout out to them. We've got Thomas Stephen from uh, Pilbara Catering. He's supplying the whole um, Pilbara region um, with food. And I mean, that's the thing. It's not just locally based. I mean, we're all doing it. The whole world's hospitality industry is hurting. So tourism in general is hurting. So there's people all over the place. Uh, and everyone's just, and Australia's a few weeks ahead of us, and they're doing some amazing things, getting well ahead of the curve. Um, but yeah, so a big shout out to all the chefs around the place who are, who are doing it for all of us. All right, so, cook, cooked egg yolks. We need here, we need some seasoning. So, sea salt. And, and eggs love, eggs are thirsty. Eggs are really thirsty. So you can give it a bit of salt there. They don't, they don't like it. Thank you for it. And white pepper. Um, I just want it smooth, really, and I don't think white pepper carries really well in uh, any sort of liquid base. But that's there we go. Some seasoned up here. And then, you know, truffle oil. So once, just, once again, some people just hate as soon as I've opened it. Some people are like run away going, oh, I think it's been overdone by people. Or I think the amount of truffle mash which was made with, uh, you know, probably blew people away in the 90s. Um, it's still really good and it's got its place. And I think truffle really brings out other flavours and things. So I'm going to go a little bit more than that. Um, so it brings other flavours to the forefront on your palate. So I think it's a real, it helps a lot. So, got that. I'm just going to put this inside my, 
piping bag, fancy piping bag holder thing. Cause I'm just fancy. I was just thinking that not not all those chefs have fancy piping bag holders like that. I'm a very fancy man, Craig. This is this is this is <laughs> this is what you'll come to see. I have my special fancy pants on. Uh, no, so that's good. And that's just there in the piping bag, and we'll get that later too. But that's that's ready to go, really. Okay, so now we'll do some more chopping. So we'll get there. We'll get there. So some usual suspects for steak tartare, echelot, absolutely amazing, gherkin, a few capers. Now, one of my friends, a very good friend of mine, uh, Graham Stockdale from Stockpot Kitchen, he says, and, he, and I agree with him, if you don't think you like capers, if you think you don't like capers, you're wrong. And I, and I agree with him. <laughs> you can not think you don't like capers, but they've got a place. They can go somewhere. I'm not saying you go sit and eat a bowl of them. No one's saying that. That's, just, that's insane talk. No, no one would dare say that. Um, there we go, that. And we're going to chop that up and some chives and some parsley. So we'll just do a bit of chopping here. I've just got a little message here for you. I presume it's from your wife. We What'd are watching say? from the garden, gin in hand, champagne cooling and waiting for tasters at the end. Oh, I'm glad she said the champagne part, because if she was just going to say she was in the garden, Craig, I was going to be like, that's just a bit mean, but that, that's lovely. No, it's been good. I um, mean, what a day today. I said, I just wish it was a normal festival day so that we could all, um, we could all be having a drink. And uh, I really felt for sure yesterday. I had to do a demo at the end of a long day of sorting out the festival for everyone else. That, that's... That's mean, and he did that to himself. <laughs> he did, yeah. Yeah, he really did. So this is where I'm talking about when you're chopping stuff up, you can take yourself a little bit more time because uh, I really think this helps the eat, how it eats at the end, uh, and not just for steak tartare, but for everything. And I think that's where you can, uh, you, you'll go, why is that meal so special? Why has that chef done that? And one, it's probably because we put more salt in there than you'll ever imagine. And then two, it's because of how much love we put into every single ingredient along the way. Because um, if everything's treated with love, no matter what you slap together, it's going to be lovely, isn't it? So, I mean, if you put a little bit of love all the way, you don't have to put so much effort into something, making something it's not, is what I'm trying to say there. So, here we go. So, we've chopped up. I'm only chopping enough for this beef here, or this venison here, sorry. There we go. So, some echelon, some gherkins. Or a gherkin and some capers. It's all going in. How are we doing for time here? We're not bad, actually. We're not bad. No, we're all good. All good for time. All right. Sip of my coffee then. All right, brilliant. I'm going to turn off the sous vide machine because that's making some sort of noise. That's the other thing, trying to do these videos in a, a kitchen with no fan on because it, it's too noisy for you people. It, it, it's warm in here. Okay, so that's your nuts and bolts of everything that's going to be chopped in there. So now, I oh know, I'm lying to you. Herbs. Can't forget the herbs. And I just watched, uh, was it Stephanie Moon, Craig? Is that her name? Yeah, she's an amazing. The, the herbs she used were just out of this world. Oh, she, she, she just did a great job. I was very jealous of a garden. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I know I live on an amazing estate, but I, I, was, I was trying to work out how I could move this outside because I thought she, she's out doing us here with this amazing garden. And a food and all the herbs were just incredible. So I've gone a little bit more basic. I've got the old parsley going on here because um, that's what I have and I do like it in um, my steak tartare. That's enough for that. And a little bit of chives. So you said there were wild chives that are growing around the estate naturally. These are yeah, wild garlic chives. So I'm only using a tiny bit of them. And I managed to find some which weren't huge because they're often just massive. Uh, and, they're, and they're probably good for making an oil or something, but pretty hard to find a space to put them in some actual food. So these were just incredible. So you can see the richness and color of that compared to um, if it was just beef or something. It's really got that. And I don't know if you're like me, Craig, but to hear the word gamey really annoys me because everyone just throws it around willy-nilly like, oh, I don't like pheasant, it's really gamey, or I don't like venison, it's really gamey. It's a really sweeping sort of statement to say the word gamey. Parts of it can be strong and sort of awfully tasting. I don't think a premium cut of venison should be gamey, and I don't think um, pheasant is ever really gamey. So I think the word gets thrown around 
quite quite a lot. So, it's, it's very stereotypical and prejudiced towards game, that, isn't it? It is. It's oh, I find it a bit gamey. I'm like, explain the word to me. But anyway, <laughs> we'll move from there. Um, gonna go a tiny bit of mustard. Just a little bit of mustard. If I was doing a normal steak tartare, it would be mustard. It would be some Worcestershire sauce. I like it minus a little bit. I'm not putting that in today because I've got lots of other sort of Asian-y flavours. And I'm not saying Worcestershire doesn't go with that, but I'm just leaving that alone. Um, so a few dashes of Tabasco. I love heat in Tabasco, so I'll, that's lavish. So don't, don't put that much in, peeps. Uh, you can probably just go a wee bit, a wee bit less. So that's coming together. And then I hate to do it. But I really like a little bit of ketchup in mine, like, and just a little bit. This gives it tomato -y. once again, a bit of sweetness probably to it as well, without a show of a doubt. Always liked it in there, and I always feel really naughty putting it in. Because it's like, I even hid it on the camera from you in my box, because I thought, I don't want no more. First thing they see is Paul McNish from Nolsey Hall, big tub of ketchup. <laughs> so, we'll get in there now. So. Well, I like one egg through my mix, so one more egg. And this is, I mean, it's an obvious statement. If you're pregnant, I wouldn't say steak tartare is the dish for you on, on many levels. So I'm getting that well mixed in. And this sort of, you get this mixed in not too early. You don't want to be doing this before your guests arrive. So this is, for me, it's a last minute sort of thing. We're getting there close to the plate up here. All right, so let's have a little bit of a try. Some seasoning, of course. Sea salt, just give it a little brine in your fingers. A bit of pepper. Okay. All right. And as I think you said yesterday, the good thing about the only good, the only good thing about doing this here is uh, you get your fingers in it and stuff because we're well, EHO has nothing to do with this at home. <laughs> All right. So that's delicious and going really well. I'm just gonna have to go grab uh, an egg. Give me two seconds. Yeah, I said yesterday, Paul, that all the chefs that are doing these demonstrations from home or in closed kitchens and so on and so forth are not doing them under the, under professional conditions as such with the HR regulations and so on and so forth. So the food that they are producing is not for the public or for sale. So at the end of the day, kind of, we are very professional and hygiene does come into it, but it's not going to be out there for the public, is it? No, it's not. And it, you know what? And it, 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 does make life a little bit easier, uh, even though I'm in, I'm in a professional kitchen, so I'm still using the right boards and everything, because it's, yeah, but I'm definitely dipping my fingers and everything. So, I'm going to start doing some plating, we're nearly there, so I've got my uh, truffled egg yolk in there, that comes out, and it's just this beautiful sheen, and that's lovely. Got the steak tartare mix. I'm not a fan of ring moulds, right, so people who know me, you know, mock me because I'm using a ring mould. I think steak tartare is one of the only things that sort of, uh, it allows it to be, it's, it's perfectly made for. Uh, there's everything that this ring mould was for, it's this. All right, so I've got some uh, Westlands uh, micro coriander too, so we're going to some Asian sort of flavours here. All right, and then just, just check out the foam, see how the foam's going. Get myself another gas charge in the. In the We've got a comment from uh, Peter Callahan here saying, Paul, you need your own show. So, what was that, Craig? We've got a comment from Peter Callahan saying, you need your own show. Oh, thanks, Pete. Do you know what? Pete's been. Pete's got to be one of the best supporters of this entire event. I've seen him everywhere. I think um, he's been on every demonstration that I put out there, yes. Pete, you're a stalker and we love you. Like, I mean. Not only does he support the industry and his company support the industry, uh, the old boys at CHR do a great job. And Pete is the best man there, but he's been on every single chef page uh, supporting them, which is what we need. So here we go. Venison tartar. Going in the ring mold. This is going to be for me, so how they managed to do that, we don't know. All right. Yeah, get out of the way. Yeah, me folks. Okay. So, I still want. I like egg. I like egg. 
and I like the surprise of egg, and I think this is all very special. So I'm making a little mention there, and I'm actually going to go a normal egg yolk in there as well. Once again, this is a this is a special sort of a steak tartare if you're doing for someone. So let's get rid of all that white. I'm just going to nestle nestle the yolk in there. Find myself some little spots. Cool. And this is when it gets really lavish. So we've got truffle yolk. And, this, and you're not going to see this because I'm about to cover this, so don't get too worried about what this looks like. And if you don't like rich food, don't go anywhere near this dish. Like just, just stay, stay well away. Um, I've got that. And before I put my foam on, I'm actually going to put a bit of this on as garnish too. And I said I love Asian ingredients. This is a fish sauce toffee. So to make this, very quickly, you get some palm sugar, put it in a pan, caramelise it down. Once it's caramelised, you then want to bang in some fish sauce to sort of uh, deglaze de de it, for want of a better word. So then in the pan, you've got a fish sauce and palm sugar toffee. It smells horrific at this point. Bang in some dried chilli. So either you're going to grind up your own dried chilli or use some chilli powder and then some peanuts. And what you're left with is this sort of peanut brittle that's like insanely hot. Uh, an amazing flavour. It's just so punchy. So I'm going to use a bit of that on top. And I keep that in the freezer. It stores really well in the freezer. All right, so there we go. Nearly finished the plate here. Here we go. There we go. So, a little bit of your miso spoon we're on top. It is sort of a hiding it all. A few cracks of that. Toffee. But you know what? We coriander's been dying because we're because we're quite warm in here. No, coriander's dying here. But let's get some on. It's a warm little kitchen at the moment. Get on there. Another bit, because we do actually want to eat that coriander. It really helps the flavour. So, there we go. Let me get that out of the way and everything else. So, it's definitely ugly delicious. I think there's no, <laughs> there's no two ways about what it looks like. Uh, but I definitely, I know Peter Callahan would actually love this and the great time and everyone else. So, it's what you want. Uh, and then what you want to definitely get in there is, um, is just break into it and just see that you've got the yolks and look at that. So if you, when you crack it in there, it is just a bit of a it's, a, it's a real foodie thing. So I mean, that's just got a few different levels. You've got the foamy yolk with miso through it. You've got the, the strong venison thing and you've got the little crackle of uh, toffee. I'll tell you what, it is absolutely banging. Um, so that's the old, that's the heart tartare in, in a nutshell, really. Let me try and get this out without annoying the hell out of you with my hand cam. And we've got that there. That's it. And as you can see, bloody sweating here, to be fair. <laughs> it's uh, really warm. Um, but there it is, venison heart tartare. So thank you very much, guys, for organising this and, and having me be part of it, really. So not only do I, I have... Produce envy now. I've got plate envy because that looks absolutely amazing. I could smash that, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's as I said, mate. Once this is all over, let's get you out here and we'll, we'll, we'll get you in some. Absolutely. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Paul. That was an amazing demonstration. There's a lot of love for you out there on Facebook also and from all over the world as well, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so we're just going to go again um, to our main charity today, which is Hospitality Action with the video. Thanks again, Paul, and I hopefully see you very soon. No worries. See you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Ollie Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Muller, Doorman. Ricardo Oliva, Concierge. Ulrich Edwards, Concierge Assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, Cafe Owner. Ioana Georgiou, Junior Sous Chef. Nun Pinto, Bartender. Mark Black, Head Porter. Andrea Demir, Receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, Apprentice Chef. Federica Pinna, Pastry Chef. Sabino Mazzone, Pastry Chef. Himeri Bochkay, Barista Supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, Sushi Head Chef. Mitchell Collier, Duty Manager. Anna Grabczewska, Public Area Cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong.